So we're going to go over uh, one just putting the target up and we've got one target here right so i'm just going to use the bare warm-up target to show everybody this and all this is when you see it, it this is just circles and shapes on paper and that's all it is that's all it really any target is mm -hmm. you know there's silhouettes and all kinds of stuff but all we do is we put it together and it just follows a general flow and all this is is 150 rounds if you shoot it from start to finish guideline a way to structure some training and everything else we've got some little things here so can people shoot one-handed at your range? They can. Perfect. Yes. Right? I don't know a range where they can't. You know, I think that's pretty standard. You can shoot one-handed as long as it's at one round per second thing. I think so. In yeah. most ranges. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the trigger ISO right here. And then we're going to go over another drill on here. And you guys can check these out. But I'm only going to cover two. So the first one that we put up is going to be our trigger ISO drill. And all that is is we're going to shoot five rounds with our firing hand, five rounds with the support hand, five rounds with the firing hand, and then five rounds with both hands. Right? We're just going to work through that and then practice that trigger prep and everything else. It's not about speed. It's about taking that shot, did the bullet go where the sights were at each and every time. So we'll set that up. <clears throat> Let me grab a staple real quick and we'll get going. Cool. Then that. Good. Yep. We'll put that one up. I'm going to leave this target off because it would go below. And if that's up close, we're going to be putting rounds down on the ground. Okay. So we'll save this one for later. We'll put it back up and show you how we do that. So let's go to... Three. We got this, we know there's our dots on top, and we're just gonna shoot this single hand, right? So the big thing that we tell people when we're doing this, especially these base drills, it's not about how fast you can shoot. We want this to make sure it's doing the right thing so that wherever those sights are lined up, that bullet went right where it was at. So we do that single-handed. Why? Because then we can isolate it all. We just tell them to do this single-handed, take that shot, feel, and then confirm what you saw is what you feel. Did it did it get you the result that you saw, right? And if it didn't, not what you wanted, then we need to adjust what we felt. Basically the whole concept of it. And then do it again and make cool. corrections. So I've already got my gun in the holster, right? So with our, what we talked about, Bob, this would already be out on the table, correct? Correct. Mags are out, everything else. Just for filming purposes, we had it on the belt here. So everything's out. All we're going to do, load that up, get eyes and ears. Good. Good. So... Get that, just gonna load that up, make sure everything's good. And all we're gonna do is starting off with that firing hand, put the hand on, I'm just gonna do one shot at a time for five rounds, right out there. Five. Good on that. So we put four out of five in there, pulled that first one down just a little bit low. Why? Well, because. Bob's have you standing behind me stressing me out and now I'm all, <laughs> get all flustered and pull that first shot, right? But no big deal. So we do that, then the same thing, we just do the exact same thing with the left hand, then we go back to the right hand again for the third set of five, and then we shoot with both. So we go to that left hand, same thing. Good, back to that right. And then we just go to both hands, and what we're looking for with this is once we go to both hands, everything starts to, single, or starts to sync up, right? Everything feels just a little bit better. And that's it. Very nice. So work through that. So we work through that, and that's generally like a warm-up that we do. Normally when we do it, we do a full mag of each, right? We okay. go through it, we do a full mag of each and every one. So we want to see a good group. We're not too worried about the left hand and the single hand if it's getting, if it's kind of all over the place, because that'll work itself out in time. What we're really concerned with is when you get to both hands, does that seem easier now? That's where we really see a lot of the benefit, because people shoot it like, man, I'm all over the paper. I'm, man, this sucks. I'm so bad. Like, okay. Well, then they get to the both hands and they're like, stacking rounds, right? Yeah. It's on that paster, that one inch paster at two or three meters or whatever. That's what we want. We want to see everything tighten up at the end. And that's yeah. what we see with the drill. So we know that it's a simple one that you can do. The next one I want to show you guys, and we'll move this back up right now. That's a pretty easy one, shooting nice and easy. You can take your time with it and shoot one round per second. The next one is going to be visual patience, right? So if we're limited on what we can and can't do, we're going to see something like this a lot, right? You can't pull out and you can't do build drills and you can't do all this crazy stuff. Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. 
But what we can pull off, thank you. What we can do, and you can set this closer or farther away, whatever you want. We can take a shot on one target, then we can drive and hold on the next. So we can use cadence a little bit, right, to force us to reset faster and see how much time we have left over. So what we'll do is we can do this or we can put this at 25 and do the same thing just on one target. But a lot of people, what they like to do is they like to move between these different dots. So easy thing to do, we'll just start on dot one. And once I take that shot, then I'm immediately going to go to dot two and I'm going to hold on the wall of the trigger, hold my sights on, and I'm going to pause. I'm going to count that one second. I'm going to break that shot. I'm going to get off that target and onto the third circle, right? Let's go shot on one, shot on two, shot on three, shot on four. And then you can start varying that up, going between different circles. But what we're looking for people to do is once they take that shot and they call that shot good, and we had talked about that earlier, calling the shot, they call that shot good, excuse me, call that shot good, immediately drive onto the next one and hold on the wall of the trigger. And J.J. Rikaza calls it shooter ready. And we kind of took that from J.J. Rikaza, Steve and I, that you know, we train a lot, and I love that concept. How fast can you be shooter ready? It's pretty much what it is. Yeah. So let's look at that real quick. Quick, easy demo for everybody. So put that out. I'm going to put this on number one. So take that shot on number one. And as soon as I break that shot and I see my sights lift the correct way, I see them come straight up, I'm immediately going to drive and hold on target two for about a second. Finger prepped on the trigger like I'm just waiting to take that shot. And once I count that second to stay within the range rules, then I'll break that shot, then go to number three, then go to number four. And then you can go back and forth between circles and kind of just pick what you want to do and play with it. So starting off, number one. Stand by. So we see that. Take that shot on number one. Boom. 1,000. Holding on the wall of the trigger. On to the next one. Take that shot. Bam. 1,000. One second between. Take that shot. Then move on to the next. And that's a drill we really like to do, especially with newer shooters, because it gets them used to resetting the trigger after every shot, and it gets them used to resetting the sights on the target. Because that's one of the biggest things that they're slow with everything. You yeah, know what you, I mean? You, you, so we can just have them work that nice and easy, and then it teaches them to feel the trigger a little bit more and reset quicker. Right. You know my buddy who works here, Steve, you know mm -hmm. Steve. Yep, Steve uh, works with us at Bear Solutions, also he, works here. Um, he describes the trigger press in a really fantastic way yeah. that I wasn't doing before. You know, you, what you do with good trainers, you steal their information and Absolutely. use it and give credit to who you get it from. Mm -hmm. So I really like for new people his description of how to press the trigger. So, you know, if we, do, if we assume the trigger press is this long, mm -hmm. if I take the slack out and get it to the wall, then the trigger press is this long. Yes. And that's on every shot yep. past, let's say, three yards. Then my accuracy gets better and I actually shoot it faster. Yep. But I remember in um, the other job I had before, I'd see people press a trigger and they'd creep it out, get it to the wall, and then fire it again. Yeah. But in realistic terms, you and I know that when I'm pressing that trigger, when the pistol rises, that slack comes out yep. and it comes back to the wall in that time that it went up and come back down. So yep. recoil. Yeah. So practicing it, press, slow back out, press, ain't really what's going to be in real life, yeah. um, as you and I know. It, I probably ought to work on during that transition period when the muzzle rises that I let slack all the way out and get it back to my wall quick. Yep. Um, and then run the wall every position out from there. Yep. Every shot ought to be fired against the wall. So, yeah, at, when he explained that, I was like, I knew that, but I would not explained it like that. Yeah. And the easier we can make it explaining it to uh, individuals who hadn't done this, just the better it makes it for them. You know, because I know, listen to a bunch of different teachers, I might pick something up better from you than I do somebody else. Right. Because of the way you explained it. Like, that's all it is. Taking that, man. That's, yep. that's great news. We're, we're all trying to get people to the same result, yeah. right? And every, there's a lot of different roads to Rome, right? right it's right. just everybody's got to get, they got to hear that thing that clicks or something like that or explain it a different way. It's all the same concepts. It's just how we're getting them to understand it. Yeah. That's a good way to put right it. Right on. So with that drill, simple stuff. Um, you can work that back and forth between different circles. And another thing, too, for someone to think about, if you're one of the shooters, you're a pretty good shooter, right? Or you like to shoot fast. What are you probably not good at? Accuracy, right? <laughs> yeah. And I know that because that's me, yeah. right? People would be like, man, you could shoot years ago. Like, man, you're fast, do all this stuff, but you put me at a 25 meter target. I, I man, I sucked. Mm. I did. Like, I, my scores weren't very good. Can I hit the target? Yeah. Was I really accurate? No. So, one thing we'll use is if people, if you're out of range, you can only shoot one shot every second, push yourself. So, another thing, just put a bullseye up, put it at 25 meters, or use a USPSA, right? The A zone on a USPSA, you can even cut that A zone in half the upper half, 
And there's a drill called the, I call it the Dawson 100 because Dave Dawson told me about it from Dawson Precision. He didn't come up with it. I can't remember who came up with it, but it's basically 100 rounds. And I do this every time I go to the range now. You draw, you take one shot at that A zone. You do that 10 times. Then you walk up and score it. If it's in the A zone, if it's a point. If it's out of the A zone, it's not a point. And then you score nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10, or I don't know, maybe four out of 10 that you got. Mm -hmm. And then over time, you do 10 of those and you score yourself out of 100, right? And then you can make it two shots, right? Two shots instead of just one. Then you do that 50 times instead of 100 times for a score of 100. And he had a great explanation. He said, if you can do that, and the key to this drill is you don't just shoot and then holster up. You shoot, take that shot, and then immediately sights back on target, trigger reset back at the wall, right? You're back on target here, good, and you hold. And then you holster. And you do that after every single shot. He said, if you can score a 95 or 100, you're basically, you have the pure shooting skills of probably a USPSA GM. Maybe not the speed and transitions and everything else, but if you can consistently shoot like that, you're probably up there at that level. Now you just got to get, you know, speed down and, and movement and everything else. Outstanding drill. Yeah. So it's a cool drill. It's super simple, but it's addicting. And you get through, you'll say like, those 10 rounds were awesome. You know, the 50s were awesome. The sixth time I did it, you know, just, <laughs> just whiffed it. But it's about consistency. Yeah, you know true. what I mean? Like, yeah. can you do this? Can you get do this 10 out of 10 times yeah. every time? Or are you hit and miss? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a good drill for that. Yeah, that's kind of me, hit and miss. <laughs> that's all of us, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. We, we are. Me. Let me yeah. clear this out real quick. So <clears throat> we got that. On the, on the, getting back on the wall after the shot yeah. and being ready to shoot it again. I'll tell you something we tend to see in here, you know, in the, in the world of instant gratification, everybody wants to know, how did I do? How was my <laughs> shot? Yeah. We'll tend to see this a whole lot. People get up here on the target, press the trigger, bang, and go, wonder how that was. Yeah. And they wonder why the bullets are down here and not up here. Yeah. You know, so um, it was the same thing. We just phrased it a little different. But when I press that, so if I shoot one shot, I get mm. two sight pictures, one beforehand, bam, and yeah. then one after. Man, I don't need to shoot it. I can bring it down and look and see how my handiwork was. Yeah. But a whole bunch of people, as you know, drop it down, want to see it, yep. and they wonder why the bullets aren't where they should be. And we got a word for that. What's it called? Follow through? Yes. People call it follow yep. through, right? It's one of the, you know, fundamentals, martial all this crap. Follow through. So I like to explain follow through. People are like, first side picture, second side picture. Another way to explain it is, well, if I see the sight lift, that's calling the shot. If I see the sight lift the same way every time, that's calling the shot. If I see the sights return back on target, that's follow through, mm -hmm. right? As long as I'm shooter ready at the end of it. Yes. And then I see that, but then I combine the two, and that is my, you know, whatever you see visually through the, the shot, the cycle of the shot, right? That's what you see. Lift and return. Call the shot, follow through. So simply just having follow through will a lot of times fix some of the issues a lot of shooters have. I'm sure you've seen that too. Uh, agreed. Yeah. yeah, heck yeah, would agree. And it, you know, it, again, it teaches them to take slack out, get back yeah. on the wall, and be ready to pop another one down range, sure. which is, you know, great for anybody in self-defense or competitive shooting. Cool. Yeah. What we're going to do now, I think we're good on that. Let's show them a couple drills. Uh, if you go to range and they can now draw, right? Now they can draw. What are some things that you do? I know we got a stack of targets up here, a bunch of stuff and some of the things you have. Why don't you take us through a couple drills, one we can draw on, and then one that's maybe, you know, if you're a roll range or something you can do, that's something that y'all do here. Okay. So um, any of these can be used. Um, this is one that's called dot torture. Mm -hmm. Just that, um, you know, you're, some of these are from the ready, the most of them are from the draw. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look this up online, find that target, you know, and print them off on a, on a sheet of paper, which you yeah. can do for a lot of stuff you have target-wise that you just showed. I have shot this one from you guys before that I really liked. Um, you'd have to remind me on the bullet count yeah, placement. Yeah, five, five, three. Okay. Yeah, five, so five, five, reload, five, three in the middle. Yeah. Like that, um, you know, fast and getting it done, transitions are fast, mm -hmm. and then making a precise shot, you yeah. know, like we're always talking about. When we do here is kind of a near to far drill. If I'm able to have two targets, mm -hmm. I'll put one at two yards and I'll put one at 15 yards. Oh, nice. Showing the difference of pace and sight picture um, on the different two targets. We can do that from the table, pick it up, get it on target, bam, bam, mm -hmm. bang, bang. The yep. difference in that. Um, I like this, we took from another trainer. So, you know, again, good trainers do stuff, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take yeah. some information from them and you use got it. You man, yeah. So this is a Royal Range card we made up. Um, it's an old four by six playing card back in the day. That's the size they used to be. And at the end of our classes, when they get down to the class and uh, I'm gonna get credit to who I took this from is old Tom Gibbons mm -hmm. up in Memphis, who was a trainer there for 40 years. Tom goes around the nation teaching still. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he did this for us in this class. What it has is a date, the instructor's name, and the drill is five shots in five seconds or less from a draw at the five yard line. 
And if oh, you can nice. put them all in this card, yeah. which is a four by six, he signs it for you and you get to take it home and hang it on your I love me wall. So put it up there and let everybody yeah. go, what's that about? And you can kind of tell them. That's a good thing for people to just, especially starting out, intermediate, novice shooter, for something for them to shoot for and try and achieve. Yeah. That's a good standard. Yeah, and a whole, you know, whole bunch of us in this kind of arena are competitive anyway. Yes. And I, you know, like you, I really like uh, finding things that challenge me and push me harder. Yeah. And I'll tell you one of the, the things I wish people would do more in here, like a bunch of the old people I used to train, is you know when they come shoot, they don't record their information. So how do I know if I'm getting any better? Yeah. I don't put the time on the target. Yeah. I don't put how many I missed. And then what I always did was, and it's over there now, but I took pictures of my targets. It showed the time and the hits. And when I got back next month, in between my training time here, I'd shoot this drill again and go, hey, I improved from last month. Yeah. If you don't record it, how are you going to know? You, you never know if you're getting better. Yeah, I got a journal. I have two of them. I have a small one that's like my training plan when I go. Yeah. Then I have another one that's a logbook of all my stuff. I think we're going to make those and actually sell them, so we'll, we'll see. That'd but I've got, I had six of them made, and they're like a hundred and something pages, and every page is the same. You just drill, gun, target, and 100 logs for each one. That way you can tell. Yeah, you know, I can go back and be like, bullshit, I did that one day. Right? <laughs> like, I promise, I did it. I never did it again, but I did do it that one time. We, you know, that 25 that meters from concealment, draw on a target, and you know, a you know, six inch steel and 0.95. Yeah, I can't yeah. do that again, but I did it once, you know. <laughs> it's good to have, it's like hitting hole one, nobody ever knows it. I know, know yeah. so. We had a bunch of other drills that relate to um, shooting silhouettes. Oh. you know, for self-defense stuff. Because a lot of people, like I got a new shooter class coming tomorrow, man. Mm -hmm. It's uh, people who've been, been out of the business for a while and they're like, man, I need to reacquaint myself with our safety rules and how I shoot it, how uh -huh. I grip it and all that. But the vast majority of my asking class, I'm like, what are y'all here for? You gonna be a competitive shooter? And everybody goes, no. Have you seen the world, Bob, that we live in? I'm doing this for self-defense. We're like, okay. Mm -hmm. So after we take this step of, hey, here's how you grip it, hold it, press the trigger, follow through, get an excite picture and all that then we try to get them to come to more advanced classes, which you can do in an indoor range, yeah. if that particular range does it. As you know, you've been here and done classes. Yeah. We'll move forward of the line on an actual event where we're teaching a class, and people get to shoot just like we're on an outdoor range. We're not in a booth, yeah. which you gotta take more care out there because it's easier to point the pistol in the wrong direction. So we have a bunch of trainers watch them and do that, and that's where we end up doing these drills where at the end of class, we'll see if you can make it and get to take this home. Yeah. You know, and I, as you and I know, man, that puts some pressure on you. It does. You know, stepping up in front of everybody. I, performance I swear, on the I ramp. think that's harder than being shot at. Honestly, yeah. God, <laughs> you're standing in front of all your peers, yeah. and you're like, man, I got to deliver, or I'm gonna look bad. So, you yeah. know, we're all competitive. So that puts pressure on you. Yeah. Um, and pressure is a good thing when you're learning how to shoot. And um, as you get better, the more pressure you put on yourself, yeah. the, the more you improve. Yeah, that social stress will teach you a lot about yourself. Oh heck yeah, it'll humble you in a minute. We'll grab a target. Did you want to use the USPSA, or which one do you want to take us through first? Let's see, let's, let me give a run at this one. All right. We'll stick that mug up. Eyes and ears. Been a minute. You gotta clean them off first? Yeah, I, <laughs> I only lick my earplug, so. Fair enough. I ain't licking everybody else's earplug. Yeah. <laughs> so the, you know, if I wanted to, if I was allowed in a certain range, mm. I could run this from here mm. with the pistol sitting on the table. Um, I could count to myself and kind of think about the time. If I had a buddy, he could tap me on the shoulder when it's time to say go, I could pick it up and run that drill from here. Yep. If you're at uh, another range like ours, you get to actually uh, put it in the holster and draw from the holster. So generally, um, when we teach people about drawing from the holster, we try to get them to step back about a half a step. Mm -hmm. We teach a draw stroke that runs with the pistol up here and out. So that if there's something in front of it, I get it up and out of the way. Yeah. Um, if they're doing a different kind, they might hit the table. So we kind of just half step back. I'm safe because I'm still in the ballistic protection of my neighbor. So I'm good on that. Right? Yeah. So covered. Eyes, ears. Make sure I'm good. All right. So it would be draw it out and try to hit that in a, in a certain amount of time. So again, if we did that, if I got them in there, and just by the hair, I barely got them in there, but I got all five in the card. Yeah. Uh, we actually put a playing card up, and we'll sign it and give it to the students after they get done with class. Nice. So it's kind of neat, something to take back from the class and go, hey, I did it under all this pressure of everybody watching. Yeah. And as you and I know, there ain't no more pressure than having that thing looking at you <laughs> and, doing, <laughs> it and doing it in front of a whole bunch of people. Know, so um, 
that's one of the, the cool drills we do that I, uh, people like to get to take home something. Um, we've had it be so um, fun that people want to take pictures of these and take them out and practice them. Yeah. So we'll have them over in the range next door and people get them, get to put them up and go, I want to work on that. Good. Um, one of the things we do here at uh, our place too is on a silhouette target, a person target, and it's for self-defense, anybody can come shoot it. So we offer a challenge uh, here. The challenge is, it's called a triple threat challenge. It's three stages of fire, three yards, five yards, and 10 yards. Mm. And if you put the bullets in the right spot into the, in the time limit, um, you get a challenge coin. So we give you a coin, it has a Royal Range emblem on it, got yeah. a pistol shooter on the back. And at the end of the year, this would make people want to come back, is you bring your coin at the end of the year and we have a shoot off, and if you're the top shooter, you win a pistol. So we're giving away a gun for the top shooter. That's pretty cool. Hadn't had anybody make it yet, and you'll see why today when we yeah. shoot it later. It's a challenging uh, drill, but I mean, had a guy last week, uh, the drill at 10 yards, to shoot seven shots in six seconds from a draw yeah. in the upper chest area. He shot all six and went, I'm done. And he went, oh no, seven. And the seventh <laughs> one went down here. He had it made, had it won. Yeah. So he would have got a coin. I suspect he'll be back this month and yeah. you know, run that challenge again. But it's, you know, it's like we talked about, uh, putting pressure on yourself when you're shooting really makes a difference. Yes. And they're doing it in front of all their buddies. Um, they pay 20 ducks to do the challenge. They get to shoot in front of their friends. And we think it you know, just builds camaraderie among the shooting mm. group of people. And it's great for their self-defense. Fair enough. You know? um, now, there are probably a plethora we could show. I'll, I'll tell you something we do, um, and you know, again, recording my performance. So, on our classes we do, like when they first come here for their marksmanship ability on defensive pistol mm -hmm. one, it's shooting this big three inch circle at yep. three yards. For defensive pistol two, it's the two inch circle yep. at three yards. And then for the last class on defensive pistol three, it's a one inch circle, similar to the drill you were shooting a minute ago. Mm. Um, it's all two handed to make sure they're getting better each time for marksmanship. Yep. And like you and I talked about, I can record my performance, take a picture of this on my phone that we never lose and you hang on to, yeah. and I'll always have those notes. I can flip back on it and go, oh, on that date I did this drill and improved each time. Yeah. You know, so a bunch of drills like that, um, mostly for, like we said, mostly for just people getting acquainted with shooting or self-defense. Every now and then we'll have uh, people come in and want to learn about three gunning or USPSA or right. IDPA. You know, the other thing that we get to do here that uh, maybe some ranges do, some don't. Uh, it's two times a month we run a IDPA match here yep. um, in two of our bays at night. Have a lot of shooters, 40 or 50 shooters each time we get it. Good. So again, just you know, exposing us to a bunch of different people. Yeah. We'll have new people want to go, hey man, I want to learn how to do that. So a lot of times us uh, trainers will go in with them and kind of shoot a match with them, educating them, and they're like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you something uh, that I find in the shooting world, and I'm sure you did too, uh, in the competitive shooting world is, you know, back when I was a basketball player, I couldn't walk up to Michael Jordan and go, hey, Michael, show me how to shoot a, shoot a free throw a little better. <laughs> He'd go, who are you, Bob? But in the yeah. shooting world, I've stood and talked to world champions and go, hey, man, I'm jerking the yeah. trigger. What am I doing wrong? Go, Come over here, Bob. I'll work with you. And That's it's, awesome. It's shocking how much people want to help. It is. Know, especially with some of these competitive shooters. Yeah. You know, and they get it all the time. You know, yeah. I'm sure everybody, someone finds like, yeah, they're probably the same questions. They oh, answer yeah. all the time. But it's good, man. And people are really inviting. It's probably whether it's, they're looking at this as a sport, as a profession, with a hobby, a recreational, home defense, like whatever they look at it as, you know, concerned citizen, which I just prefer the term patriot yep. a little bit more than concerned citizen. Yeah, like it's that. like, no, nah, yeah. man, you're a patriot of this country. Hashtag America, right? yeah. you know what I'm <laughs> But with that said, people are extremely helpful, right? There's so many options out there. So I think with this, big thing they're gonna be able to do, so we know if we're going to a range and we have a lot of limitations on what we can do. Work on the vision, work on prepping the trigger, work on the things you can work on. Just because you can't shoot faster and shoot at, you know, shoot, draw and shoot a build drill, you know, with 1500.15 splits or, you know, quarter second or faster splits or something because of the range rules, doesn't mean you can't get a lot of good work in. Challenge yourself and add variables, right? Yeah. So if I take that, well, I can't shoot, I, I want to shoot faster. Well, hey man, here's something that'll slow you down. Push the target out to the back and now run that exact same drill and then get to the point, improve to get to the point where you can shoot a build drill at 25 meters with one shot per second, you know, or farther, however, with the distance you have versus shooting it up fast and complaining that the range the rules won't, you know, yeah. adhere to what you want to do. What are you going to say? So just change it up to then you'll fit within the rules and you're still going to get better. Oh, you know, you yeah. just work on different things and then working on a single target. You know, if you can't, if you're trying to work something different, maybe it's just small transitions, little bump transitions or near transitions. We take that shot and it's, can I take that shot, call it good and immediately drive on to the next target. And once I do that, then I'll take that shot, drive on to something smaller. 
and work between different sides. And there's a casino drill, right? They got the target, multiple numbers and shapes and colors and all kinds of crap. You can do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. At the end of the day, circles and shapes on paper, right? It's how you use it. But try and find something that you can improve on. You know, and here's another one I stole from somewhere. I don't remember who gave this to us. I'm sure you've heard of it. We usually did it in long range rifle shooting, but we also do it in pistol shooting on that whole calling your shot thing. So working with a girl who wanted to be a competitor uh, and shooting USPSA, which we shoot a little further than we do in IDPA, right? Mm -hmm. Targets are sometimes smaller. Yeah. So we didn't think as her trainers that she was watching her sights good enough, wasn't calling her shot. So we stood back here at 25 yards, uh, multi camo the target, and it was a bullseye target. So bring your pistol up, fire a shot. When it goes off, tell me where it hit. You can't walk down there to it, can't bring the target to you. So how are you gonna tell me where it hit? When the gun went off, I called yeah. where the sights were at the moment the muzzle flash happened. Yep. But you and I know a lot of people mm, shut their eyes when yeah. it goes off, which is not, I'm not gonna be able to see it. And then when they get one where they can call within a two hour window, yep. you know, if I went bang, that's well, between three and five then they're getting pretty good at looking yeah, at yeah. sights. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I know you've heard this, I've seen it multiple times when we're shooting in low light, you know, and people go, God darn, I need to shoot in low light all the time. My group went from here, yeah. but daylight on this big. And we go, why, why do you think, dude? Because you're watching those better. Yeah. You're not looking at dude's target next door, or this yeah. or that. You're looking at your freaking sights. The light sights. goes off and those sights are perfect. Yeah. I mean, you can see your sights better at, you know, when you put on a white light, you can see those pistol sights better than you ever, ever could. Oh yeah. yeah. And there's no other distractions. Yeah. Gotta look at those. Yeah. There ain't nothing else there to see. So yeah. just different little drills to help people get better. And again, track your progress to make sure you're getting better. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I think that's pretty good. Um, we'll shoot that stuff later. and. Yeah, we appreciate your time, Bob. Awesome, man. Thank you Thanks very for much. Having us. Absolutely. So get out to the range. Remember, if you can dream it, you can do it. You know what I mean? There's more importantly, there's always something you can work on. You can always do something. Even if there's rules in place, you can figure something out. Well, I'm gonna work on isolate this one aspect. Or I'm gonna shoot this drill, but I'm gonna put more emphasis on the being shooter ready. You know, seeing the next target, feeling the trigger, holding on the wall focusing on how I reset the trigger. You can still get good work in an indoor range, even though at some places you might not be able to do as much as you can, say here at roll range, right? Sure. Yeah. Here you can do a lot more. So get out there, train, enjoy it, and have a good time. Thank you. Thank you.